you. Okay, this is a summary of my presentation. I will start presenting some new techniques and methodologies. We developed for uh, imaging uh, cardiovascular biomarkers assessment, and then I will show some results on uh, using these biomarkers on our animal pathophysiological models, and at the end, just two new imaging te technologies uh, we are using. So let's start with the imaging biomarker, in particular with the coronary flow reserve. So you know, flow, flow velocity and flow reserve in coronary arteries are important functional parameters, conditioning cardiac function, myocardial viability, and ventricular remodeling. And uh, moreover, the CFR is uh, clinically relevant because uh, a reduction in CFR is a user that can be used as a predictor for coronary artery disease, and also alteration of CFR has been reported in, uh, in patients <coughs> with uh, several different cardiovascular disease, or such as diabetes, metabolic syndrome. So we, we looking at the literature, the problem is that in mice, there is a lack for a standardized methodology for assess coronary flow reserve. So we, we started this project with the aims to, to study the time curves of the left coronary artery vasodilation of the, obtained by shifting between different concentration of uh, isoflurane, and to assess the best fitting model of our data in order to, to, to obtain, to, to measure the opti optimal time we need to wait in order to have a maximal response in terms of uh, blood flow. So what we need is uh, we localize the left coronary artery by color Doppler, and we measure the pulse wa wave Doppler in the left coronary artery at different concentration of isoflurane. And uh, we measure that the blood flow in terms of uh, velocity time integral and velocity peak. We acquired uh, this blood flow velocity signal at different time points during the full procedure, which is six minute basal, then we switch the concentration of isoflurane from 1% to 2.5%, and we wait, wait for 30 minutes acquiring uh, blood flow information. We fitted this, all, this time, all this data with both the sigmoid and an exponential model, and we uh, looking for the best, uh, best fitting model. This allows us to evaluate, uh, to, to assess the time to 90, which is the mean time needed to reach the 90% of the plateau value of the blood flow velocity, which is the maximal response. So uh, the sigmoid model provided the best results, both considering the VTI, uh, value of the bl blood flow velocity or the peak value, and uh, the time about the time we 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 evaluated the time to no 19 percent, and uh, the we found that the time needed to to reach the plateau is about 40 minutes, and this is a very important result because if you look at the literature, if you read papers where. Uh, uh, results about uh, coronary flow reserve is reported. The mean time used by scientists is only four minutes. So the, in other papers, you, you have this response on mean. So what we observed is uh, that if you want to comp if you want to evaluate coronary flow reserve, you have to wait. 14 minutes after switching to high concentration of isoflurane. Otherwise, the, your response is, can be significantly lower than the maximal response of your uh, Moreover, there is also another big important difference. If you look at the four minute values, uh, it, there is also a difference uh, in the response if you use the velocity time integral or the peak velocity integral. This difference disappeared when you evaluate the maximal response at 40 minutes. So, conclusion, great attention has been to when assessing CFR in mice, 
and uh, we need a standardized protocol in terms of time curves of the consent changing concentration uh, in order to, to, to have a, a true maximal response of the animal to the change in, in uh, anesthetic concentration and so in order to compare results between uh, experiment models and laboratories. Okay, the second uh, techniques uh, I will show is the evaluation of the aortic uh, stiffness which is, I think, uh, in topic with the preceding uh, presentation, uh, but with the different methodology, I will show. Uh, our techniques uh, is based on the evaluation of the local pulse wave velocity of the of vessels. Uh, as we remember, as the pul pulse wave velocity is a surrogate biomarker of the stiffness. So our techniques can be applied to several uh, sites. I mean, uh, in abdominal aorta, in aortic arch, and also in carotid artery. At the end, we can have uh, a full functional analysis of the arterial tree. From the theoretical basis, uh, we, uh, the, the, our assessment of the local pulse velocity is based on the combination of the Bramoril and the water hammer equations. Using this equation, you can evaluate the local pulse velocity using measurements of diameter and mean flow velocity. Simply using the loop, I mean the plot between velocity and natural logarithm of the diameter, which is this equation. So we evaluate diameter, blood flow, and we obtain the plot. To be honest, uh, the, this equation holds only in the linear part of the, this plot. I mean, in other words, it holds only when unidirectional waves are present. There is not reflection from uh, downstream side. But you can see in, uh, in this plot, there are, you can see two linear parts on the, on the plot. So we can evaluate two values of the local pulse wave velocity in, uh, in the artery. Values uh, which this part, which uh, is uh, the early systole uh, pulse wave velocity, A another value of pulse wave velocity, which which is the late systole pulse wave velocity. So this is important because as Nick showed, we, we can have two different values of, diff of pulse wave velocity at different pressures, which is very important because uh, from a physiological point of view, pulse wave velocity is per pressure dependent. Uh, how we do uh, regarding image processing, we capture uh, B mode images of the carotid artery, as an example, of the mice, and we uh, assess, we apply edge detection contour tracking techniques with a custom software of these images, obtaining the diameter, the stroke change in diameter of the vessel, and we evaluate the envelope of the trace of the Doppler from the pulse wave Doppler. This signal will be interpolated both in frequency in time and uh, also aligning, aligned in time. And at the end, the software plots the, the, the loop and allow to, to, to find the two linear parts of the plot. We validate the system uh, in uh, wild type mice of different ages. <coughs> and uh, as, as, as you can see, and uh, the old animals show a greater pulse wave velocity, which means stiffer arteries. And this difference was significant both considering early systolic value of the pulse wave velocity or late systolic value of the pulse wave velocity. Regarding bland altman analysis, uh, despite a good we found that despite a good correlation between early systolic and late systolic uh, value, these latter are significantly higher than uh, the early systolic uh, uh, value, demonstrating the pressure dependence. Okay, uh, I, I think the, 
this is uh, our uh, more more convincing and more useful biomarker we, we use it we found in mouse because with this biomarker you can find information about uh, the functional properties of arteries at different sites which are strictly linked to the atherosclerotic local process. So, okay, third techniques. Uh, we used the wave intensity analysis. Very briefly, we, wave intensity analysis provides information about the interaction between the work of the left ventricle and the mechanical properties of the arterial system. Uh, the original theory of wave intensity analysis was uh, introduced by Park in 2009, and uh, it's based on the combination of uh, data from blood pressure and blood velocity according to this equation. You solving, I mean, from a graphical point of view, this equation, you will obtain a signal like this, which is the wave intensity signal. In this signal, you can find three waves, a first forward wave, a second backward compression wave, and a third forward expansion wave. This, all these waves have a physiological meaning. In particular, the peak of the forward compression expansion wave, compression wave is uh, linked to the maximum of the derivative of the pulse pressure. The peak of the forward expansion wave is linked to the time cost of, of the left ventricle pressure decay, and the peak of the backward reflection wave is mirroring reflection from downstream arterial side. So you have a lot of information both from arterial and heart in this. Uh, however, unfortunately, when uh, we are acquiring imaging, we are, we are, when we are doing ultrasonic Im imaging, we don't have pressure values. So, but thanks to the work of Feng and colleagues, we can evaluate wave intensity analysis using ultrasound derived measurements only. In particular, we have to uh, use the diameter instead of the pressure, and we need to add some other information in terms of local pulse wave velocity. So the equation we used for wave intensity analysis is this equation. But at the end, the signal you can obtain applying this equation is uh, absolutely very similar correspondent to the curve expected from the original theory. So we enrolled 16 uh, wild type mice at dif and at different ages, uh, same animals in follow up. And we measured and we acquired both uh, cardiac and vascular parameters. And uh, with vascular parameters, in terms of image processing, we, uh, we developed uh, a custom software for uh, st stroke change in, volume in diameter evaluation, also by means of edge detection contour tracking techniques. And the same, uh, sorry, and we, from the pulse weight Doppler, we obtained the envelope of the trace. So, from this elaboration, you have a diameter and flow as before. We also evaluated by the loop the local pulse wave velocity and put in all this information together according to the preceding equation, you obtain the wave intensity signal in our animals. And as you can see, in the, in the, in the wave intensity signal, we can find the all the peaks already described. Okay, we correlated our uh, parameters uh, with the cardiac parameters, uh, both with the cardiac parameters, uh, standard cardiac parameters such as cardiac output, digestion fraction, but also with the strain derived parameters at both ages, also with when the animals were uh, holding. So, and uh, the most important results of the study 
was that the peak of the first wa wave <coughs> significantly decreased between uh, T0 and T1. And this is in agreement with the changes in uh, functional parameters uh, with age. And also, we, we found that uh, the peak of the wave correlated with cardiac functional parameters at uh, T0, but not at T1. This means that uh, the peak of the waves can be used as a representative uh, values of the left ventricle function decay. And also, we, it provides some information about the fact that uh, at T1, the system might work in a condition which is not optimal in terms of mechanical action with age. The peak of the backward wave <coughs> is significantly decreased in amplitude between the two time points, and this could reflect that with aging, the total energy carried by the pressure wave is reduced. Finally, the third peak is, uh, we found it was significantly decreased between the two time points, and this is due to the fact that uh, the left ventricular uh, uh, relaxation uh, uh, is uh, decreased with, uh, with the aging. Okay, uh, I think the wave intensity analysis is uh, uh, a quite complex analysis to understand, but uh, in our opinion, uh, it could be very useful in future because it provides a uh, lot of information on the coupling between the heart and vessels. Just before moving to models, uh, I, I will show two other uh, biomarkers we use in our models. In particular, we, uh, with the color Doppler and pulse rate Doppler, we evaluate the healthy status of the microcirculation in kidneys of mice, simply evaluating these two indexes from the Doppler signal. These indexes are the pulsatility and the reflectivity indexes, and uh, in general, greater are the indexes, uh, greater is the damage to the kidney microcirculation. Finally, we are working on liver now, and this is uh, the very preliminary work. Uh, we, 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 are we are trying to uh, assess the fat content of liver in our mice, and uh, the first biomarker we are using is uh, the ratio between the mean values of the gray level of the of a region of interest uh, in the hepatic region and another region of interest uh, in the kidney. With looking at this ratio, you can have uh, a, a, an assessment of the fat content of the of the liver. Okay, moving to pathophysiological model, I, I'll show some results using our bio markers. So the, the first model is the metabolic syndrome model with obese mice. Uh, we use the mixed group, group of uh, young and adult wild type and obese mice with normal diet. And uh, with this study, we want to, to, to study the interactions between age and genotype. Uh, most important results is that uh, in terms of uh, cardiac function, Obese mice uh, show a reduced cardiac functions at both ages, <coughs> but uh, only wild type show a, a reduction uh, in, uh, in uh, cardiac function from young, person from young to, to adult age. Uh, looking at the arterial sites, we notice that there is no change in the di mean diameter of uh, obese mice, while a change was found in, uh, in wild type. And this is in agreement with the vascular remodeling of wild type mice, uh, which is compatible with the aging process. And this process uh, is not present uh, in obese mice. Uh, uh, we speculate because the endothelial dysfunction with the reduced vascular tone of our animals. Uh, Kidne about the kidney, you, you see the, the, um, the kidney, the microcirculation of the kidney uh, 
show, uh, I, I mean, the, 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 our indexes are greater in obese mice, reflecting a damage in microcirculation of these animals at both ages, and also about the liver, uh, the, the fat content of the, of the liver in uh, obese mice uh, is greater than in the uh, wild type mice. This uh, work uh, uh, was useful for us just to, to convince that uh, this model is a good model for studies metabolic <coughs> syndrome uh, without uh, having problem for the interaction of the aging process. Second model is we study is the diabetic uh, model. In this case, as a, the discussion of yesterday, we 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 feel we, we have the necessity to uh, have a full ultrasound phenotyping of these diabetic mice in order to 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 study treatment, intervention, uh, and uh, other uh, uh, various intervention we we test. And uh, so we, we, we started this study in order to have a full set of reference values for diabetic <coughs> mice. But uh, b beyond the, the goal of finding this full set of reference, we found some interesting results in our, in our model. In particular, we found that uh, the cardiac perf performance of uh, diabetic mice uh, are reduced both without cardiac hypertrophy. Uh, instead, on the contrary, the left ventricular mass of uh, these diabetic mice is lower than the left ventricular mass of a wild type. So we know this can be due to the deleterious effect of sustained insulin resistance and hyperglycemia, but we are also speculating that we are in face of a different uh, cardiac dysfunction which is usually associated with uh, cardiac hypertrophy. About the um, vascular part, uh, our, uh, um, while the, our uh, diabetic mice show lower value of the diameter in uh, both in aorta and in carotid, and this can be uh, explained by presence of a reduced the nitric oxide bioavailability, I mean reduced the endothelial uh, function in these animals, which is linked to hyperleptinemia of the diabetic mice. Finally, both the, the diabetic mice show a, 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 some, a sort of the damage at level of the kidney microcirculation and also a greater amount of uh, uh, fat content in the liver. So, uh, I, I, I uh, okay, so the third model uh, I'll, I'll present is an inflammatory model, uh, which is based uh, on uh, mice uh, with a knockout for the P2X7 pro-inflammatory receptor. Uh, the, the project was to, to study the effect of a night fat diet on cardiovascular, renal, and uh, liver system, uh, but the, the, this protocol is uh, still in progress and uh, I'm showing all the results about uh, standard diet and uh, very preliminary results. And the interesting uh, finding of this model uh, were that uh, in uh, this uh, genetic modified animals, we found uh, a, a preserved, I mean an improved vascular function which can be, can be explained by the lower level of inflammation of in these animals, but together with uh, uh, worse cardiac performance in these animals, which can be explained, but we are working on this, uh, on a, a cardiac uh, mitochondrial dysfunction. The, the, this model will be discussed by Nicole later with the uh, presentation. So, now, uh, I have to, to just to, to discuss the last two points of my presentation, two new techniques we are working with. Uh, I, I think Dieter will spend some time to explain how the photoacoustic imaging technology uh, worked from a technical point of view, just 
few words just briefly to point out that photoacoustic imaging allows to map and measure the optical absorbance of tissues. So we use uh, the uh, photoacoustic imaging in this first application, which is uh, uh, the study of uh, macrophages infiltrates in plaques. And this is an in vitro, in vitro study by now. We, you know, macrophages are very important uh, because they roll in growing and uh, um, rupture of plaque. And so we, we, we now have the possibility to, to map the presence of these macrophages in, in vivo. And uh, we, we, can, uh, we can simply embedded gold nanoparticle inside of macrophages and this leave uh, uh, cell viability without problem. So uh, at the end, you will have some gold nanorods, very nanomaterials, very small uh, uh, rods of gold inside the macrophages. And this can be used as a, an exogenous contrast for photoacoustic. So we, the, the, the goal of this study was to demonstrate that uh, it's possible to embed gold nanorods, and also we we were we were looking for the minimum uh, level of the detection of the solution of gold nanorods to be detected by the techniques. So we 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 study human blood, a suspension of gold nanorods in human blood, and uh, human human blood containing macrophages with embedded gold nanorods. This is the spectra obtained uh, with the photoacoustic techniques. And you can see this is the blood with the typical fingerprint of the hemoglobin uh, in this range of optical absorbance. While both the blood with gold nanorods and the blood with the macrophages with embedded gold nanorods show a, a grid peak at 840 nanomacrophages nanometers, which is uh, the resonance peak of gold nanorods. And the, the after, oh, sorry, after acquiring spectra, we also acquire the images, and we, we change the concentration of gold nanorods embedded in macrophages, and we find that you can delete, you can find uh, the detection limit of these plasmonic macrophages is well below 3% dilution, which, which means that we can now move to in vivo experiments. Uh, photoacoustics is also particularly useful together with ultrasound in, uh, in other models, such as in this model of uh, xenograph colon cancer. Combining all the technology, you have a lot of information on, on uh, your uh, tumor. In particular, you can have uh, information, uh, morphological information by ultrasound. Uh, perfusion information by both power Doppler and contrast uh, uh, microbubble contrast uh, signal, but at the end you can also add information about uh, oxygen saturation of the this tumor. In particular, this, this can be useful to find uh, hypoxic regions in your lesion. Uh, this third application of photoacoustics uh, is uh, different because in this case we don't need a, uh, an exogenous contrast agent because we can uh, use the endogenous con uh, contrast agents provided by the melanin. This is a model uh, of uh, melanoma and you can see from an ultrasound point of view there is not much difference between the tissue of the tumor, tumor and the normal tissue under the skin. but both looking at the spectra of the tumor at the healthy tissue, but also at the imaging uh, color map of the optical absorbance, there is a great difference with uh, a, a high spectroscopic, spectroscopic specificity provided by the melanin inside the melanoma. Last point we can use, and this can be, I think, uh, a great opportunity for a, a fast translation uh, in a human study, the photoacoustic in uh, regenerative medicine. Uh, 
uh, in particular in uh, applications such as nerve and damage repair, uh, stem cell application in myocardial infarct, and also in implant when implanting uh, vascular uh, polymeric vascular grafts, because. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, photoacoustic imaging allows us to, uh, to acquire parameters about oxygen saturation of tissue around the, where the regeneration of tissue is present, uh, and also information about the ratio between oxy and the oxy hemoglobin. Okay, now I, I'm happy to, to, to show some results from this uh, last challenge uh, we, we are facing, which is the use of high frequency ultrasound uh, in humans, uh, uh, thanks to visual sonics and the vivo device. Uh, for high frequency ultrasound, I mean up to 70 megahertz in humans, so very high frequency. Okay, we, we use the, this technology for several different applications, as you can uh, think, most of application are in the dermatology dermatologic field, but uh, for today I will show our uh, our uh, study in uh, vascular uh, field. In particular, we started with the, with this with this project, which is uh, meant to uh, to to obtain a vascular phenotyping of uh, um, the radial artery. So. We we, oh, sorry. we acquire images of the radial artery with uh, in from five healthy individuals with the 70 megahertz probe, and we start we compared the the layers of these uh, the radial artery with the carotid artery and brachial artery in terms of measurements uh, and uh, ultrasound characteristics, and uh, we we found that there there are marked difference in uh, wall ultrastructure uh, in the radial artery, uh, which can be measured. And uh, we, are, we, we believe that the clinical significance of this difference uh, is still unknown. And this means that we, we might provide novel information in vascular diseases in arterial districts that have never been studied until now due to the limited resolution of clinical ultrasound machine. So, in the light of the results we, we, we have with the, with the healthy subjects, we, we starting to, to study fibromuscular dysplasia patients, and uh, in this case you, you can, just an example of the difference between uh, uh, the radial artery of an healthy subject and the radial artery of a, a, a patient. And a, a very promising uh, uh, finding is the layer of these uh, subjects are quite different with the, uh, what, and we find uh, a, a new ultrasound uh, uh, sign that we, we call the, the third interface. So it will be, the, would be very useful to characterize this kind of patient. <coughs> Another application in vascular uh, study is the study of interdigital arteries. Uh, to, the study was uh, aimed to, to, to evaluate the, pre the presence of abnormalities uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the arteries of fingers, in particular for patients suffering vasculitis or renal phenomena. And, uh, to understand if uh, such changes uh, can be used uh, for diagnosis or follow-up of this patient. The, the, the protocol is quite complex because uh, it requires acquisition from several sections of the fingers of the subjects, uh, and all images were uh, uh, processed by uh, custom automatic software, me measuring diameter, pulsatility, and thickness of the layers of the artery of the fingers. Uh, in the table, you can appreciate the, the, the order of magnitude of the of measurements, and uh, in particular, in this case, in a pathological subject, the intima layer account for only 64 microns. Uh, we also had the opportunity, looking at this patient, to I think to to to, to find for the first time uh, a picture of uh, an. Uh, 
atherosclerotic plaque in an interdigital artery of the diabetic patients. So this would be a very interesting result. I, I, in my opinion, this is the first ultrasound scan of this plaque. Okay, just to remember, just uh, an opportunity to collaboration. Uh, we are part of the agrobioimaging uh, uh, group network, uh, which was designed to facilitate open access to preclinical and clinical uh, imaging techniques. So if you are interested, please go to the website because there is possibility to, to assess to the various sites uh, for imaging uh, technology. And before, thank you of you all. Uh, it's a pleasure to invite of you, all of you to the uh, to stand up and to participate to the artery meeting, which will be held next October in Pisa. Okay, thank you again.